Hey there, and thank you so much for watching. Happy Easter if you celebrate, but regardless of your religious affiliation, I hope that you can appreciate that the season of spring brings this idea of renewal and resurrection. So that was the inspiration for the topic of today's video. I am someone that loves to hear success stories and testimonials, and I'm just, I'm very interested in proof. Like I wanna see that something works. I wanna see evidence um, that things are possible. So, on the topic of renewal, these are some stories that I've heard um, personally, like interacted with, um, that are just very hopeful and super encouraging. Because maybe this spring you're excited for the season ahead, and maybe you're like really cool and jazzed about life, and that's amazing. But maybe you're kind of like in this place where you're like, meh, not really looking forward to it. So I'm going to share these three stories, and they're specifically about relationships um, and the idea of relationship renewal and hope. Because, again, I'm someone that likes to see proof that things are possible. And these stories are things that I tell myself to remind myself that hope and reconciliation and rebirth are always possible. So there are three of them, and I'm going to start with the one that's kind of like the furthest away in time and in like my relationship. Um, then there's one that, that I'm a little bit closer to, and, the fi and finally is one that I just heard last Wednesday and was like, made me, it like made my whole like month. So, okay, the first one. I heard when I was on a trip to London. So this was, I want to say maybe 10 years ago, I had just graduated college and I was going with a group from church. Um, and it was like a, a prayer conference that we were going to. And it was specifically to reach um, the Muslim people and to um, support, encourage and pray for and uplift the Muslim, Muslim people of the Muslim faith. Um, and there was a family there that um, was intercultural, like interfaith. And I, I'm always attracted to that because I come from a family that was intercultural. My dad is Korean. My mom is Swedish and Czech. Uh, they met actually when he was a, he came over as a foreign exchange student in high school. He lived with her family. They met, they fell in love. The rest is history. Um, so... I'm, I was very attracted. So the mom and this family was um, Anglo, white, white, um, actually um, American. And the dad was uh, Middle Eastern. And they had three boys. And I was watching kind of over, it was a two week conference and I was kind of watching them interact. And I just loved like the way that they were together. Like they were very like, he would be kind of gruff and like, you know, <laughs> in his way. And then she was kind of like, oh, but very supportive of him and very respectful um, but while keeping her own identity and being very, um, she knew how to handle him. So I was like, I was very intrigued by this. And then she and I had a moment together and I was like, you know, it seems like you and your husband have a really cool relationship. Like, I just, I think that's neat. She's like, oh, <laughs> let me tell you, it, it wasn't always that way. So when they first married, it's tough. It's tough being an intercultural interfaith family. And she said it was so difficult for her at first. He was very Middle Eastern male in his thinking. And she came from a Western perspective. And making those two perspectives work caused a lot of friction and was super hard on her to the point, she said, where she had like an infant and they were broken. Like they were, they were, there was nothing to build on in their relationship. And she said that she there was just a point where she just had to let go. And she had been praying through this whole time. She said like from the beginning of their relationship all through and just praying and in, in constant contact with, with God. And like, even still, she was like, this is so hard. She just had to let it go. And she said after that time, very slowly, like over a period of like months, slowly, slowly, she could see changes in her husband and slowly they were able to, Rebuild. She said it didn't come from either one of them. It was completely external from the both of them, drawing them back together to this point where I think her son was, was maybe 15 or 16. 16 years later, they have this healed relationship. And I was like, wow, like that's really pretty amazing. She's like, yeah, there was nothing to build on. It was completely outside the both of them. So that was just something like whenever I see them, I'm still in friends with them on Facebook. And whenever I see them, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. So... That was them, and that was like 10, 11 years ago. So more recently, I have a friend from college, and she and I were on the same floor my freshman year, her junior year, because she had come back. She left for a couple of years and was coming back to finish up. And we were in college, so she was single at the time. The guy that she was dating, um, they'd been together for a while, but they were still kind of like... Um, 
they, they were just dating at that point. Um, so she was from like New Jersey by way or California by way of New Jersey. So we kind of like jived on that. Um, and he was, so she was, she's Chinese and he was, um, his family was very Norwegian. He was from, um, Cape Cod and his family had been there for generations. So they were very established in the Cape and she'd been there to visit the family. And they, so they'd been together for a couple of years at this point. Um, and when they first met, he was this like crazy kind of like quirky, odd kind of skater boy. He still is the skater boy. He's like skater surfer. And they actually own a surf shop together um, now. But that was his dream growing up was to own a surf shop. So he was kind of this quirky kid when they first met. But then he met her and he was like, he was going to up his style game. So he went out and he like got himself a makeover and got these clothes. Uh, but even still, he's a very, he might be a little bit quirky, but he was a very like well-raised kid. Like he was super um just respectful even though he had like the these quirks and wasn't always the most responsible hey who among us is always responsible but he was very respectful and I like noticed that about him and like he was a good dude so I watched them kind of through through uh, through college she graduated I finished up and they were kind of in the area they got married I was at their wedding it was really cool in 2005 I think they got married so I've known them for close to 14 years at this point and their story is interesting because, I mean, like, every relationship has its ups and downs. Um, and I feel like every relationship comes to the breaking point. And then you can either make the choice to break it off or to rebuild. And for the two of them, um, and again, like, I, I just had a perspective and I, I, I kind of had, like, a front row seat for their relationship. Because even though we weren't always in super contact, like, they went that, back up to the Cape um, and I was still in New Jersey. Um, I would stay in touch and it turned out at one point, so she had her daughter and then she had a son and it was tough because it's tough running a business. I mean, it's my side hustle Saturday show. Like it's tough to keep a business going, let alone like a young family in a business and to be the provider. Like it's tough to figure that out. And he was doing that, but it was like, it was really hard on him. And he was maybe drinking a little bit more than he should. Um, and she said at one point she and another friend of ours from college, she was ready to leave and she and this other friend were going to do it on their own. So she like gave him an ultimatum and she left the Cape and came back to live in a town by us and was like to him, get your stuff together, like get your act together. So she gave him this ultimatum, get your stuff together or we're through. She moved from the Cape down to a town by us and just started living her life. She went back for her master's degree and she had two kids at this point. And again, very, very slowly he worked his thing. He was alone at this point. So he had no, you know, like no kids, no family. And he worked his thing, got his thing together and came down and actually would spend the winters in the town with her and then would go back up to the Cape for the summer. And again, over a period of years, they started to rebuild and their relationship kind of came back together. So that's the second story. The third story, and this is the one that like, made probably made the last 15 years of my life better so and I just heard this last Wednesday in college I had a literature teacher it was an English major and there were only a few teachers I'd say there were like five teachers and two of them were really really influential one was the department head and the other was a sort of she had a specialty in classics um but she was super influential in my life and she was just very like nurturing she at that time I think was maybe in her late 60s early 70s never married <laughs> and just had a wonderful loving warm personality but she was laser sharp razor sharp could analyze deconstruct whatever she was a special her specialty was T.S. Eliot and Milton um, and I know this because when we went to the Czech Republic I bought her a version of uh, T.S. Eliot in Czech um, and that was what she did her doctorate in. And I think she did it in German. Like her languages were French, German, and Latin. Uh, she was amazing, but very like um, nurturing and caring. I remember one class and I was taking a general lit course for like a, a prereq um, for like core curriculum. And she brought in for the class, cause I mean, there are people from all different majors and it was tough to kind of teach to a level that everyone could understand, but she brought in her flute and like played a song on her flute to illustrate a point we were think we were doing, um, I forget, I think it was Milton, something like that. Um, she's just the dearest, sweetest woman ever. And 
the fact that she'd never been married was like kind of sad for us. And like my, my English major cronies, we'd be like, oh, Dr. So-and-so, like she just, I wish she'd find someone to settle down with and like spend her time with. Cause she was just, she was so um, caring, but she was also at that point, very, very um, precise. And I was like, why, why is she not, uh, I, I don't know. We were all, we all would hope for, for someone that she would like a companion for her. Um, she's super active. She played in orchestras. She went to like Bible studies and stuff, but still nothing. She came close. She was engaged twice, um, but they fell through and broke off. So this uh, fast forward, I graduated um, and then fast forward and she stayed in touch. Like she took me out for graduation to celebrate um, and went to an Italian restaurant. She was just really, really sweet. And I would come back to the campus for orchestra recitals and she was always there. And she kind of gradually, she stopped teaching about 10 years ago. Um, she owned her own house. So she was kind of in the area, kind of doing things here and there. Um, we would just see her and kind of be like, oh, there's Dr. So-and-so. So, and I just heard this again last Wednesday. It was, it was our last orchestra concert for the season, actually, for forever. <laughs> um, and I was sitting, we were eating, and there were two other professors that knew her, two other lady professors. And they were like, oh, we were kind of catching up and, you know, what was going to happen, what was happening on, on campus, campus news. And they said, oh, and Dr. So-and-so, my professor, and Dr. Other So-and-so are on their honeymoon to Israel. And I was like, excuse me, what? I was like, oh yeah, Dr. So-and-so, my professor, and Dr. This Other Guy got married about a month ago. And I was like, so apparently, what ha 77 years old, this, this woman is now. What happened was this other doctor had retired that used to, the professor retired, um, he used to teach at the college and they kept in touch. He moved away, but they kept in touch like Christmas cards and calls, whatnot. And his wife passed away and they still kept in touch and they would visit every now and then. And eventually, I guess something just kind of blossomed and grew between them to the point where at 77, she's married and they just got back from their honeymoon to Israel. And I saw they were in the audience of this orchestra concert and I like I saw them and I was like, oh my goodness, I couldn't believe it. Like when I heard this from the two professors that told me, I was like in shock, but so excited for her because it just goes to show you that you are never too old for love. 77 years old and she's probably, I hope she's having the time of her life. So those are my stories of resurrection and hope in regard to relationships. I hope that you have enjoyed these. Um, if you have any stories, success stories, testimonials that you would like to share about relationships, um, I'd love to hear them. I'm sure other people would love to read them, so leave them in the comments below. Thank you as always for watching, and I hope you'll keep watching. Bye.